Hello and welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode I've got a live commentary of Boston United versus Alfreton Town. I think they're Alfreton Town? It might just be Alfreton. Um, in the Conference North. Um, firstly, an apology. Um, it's a slightly longer episode. than Well, not a longer episode, but a longer recap before we get into the episode. I actually recorded a whole episode for the previous match to this one um, and then realised I didn't have my microphone on. So rather than trying to pretend I was doing a live com on a match I already knew the outcome of. I thought I'd just move forward to the next match, um, recap one extra game um, and do it this way. In fact, if I hadn't mentioned it, you probably wouldn't have even noticed. But if we get straight into that recap, the last time you were with me, it was the uh, home match against Tamworth, which we won 2-1 um, with goals from Grant Roberts and Dale Southwell and a late consolation goal for Tamworth. But it was a game we were pretty much always in control. We're very happy with that result. Um, the game after that, though... We had our first defeat of the season. We went away to Hensford. Um, they went in the lead, 1-0 after 10 minutes. Um, we actually took the lead around about the half-hour mark. Quick fire double from Deli Adebola and then Dale Southwell. Um, but after that, Lionel Stone, a player who had been so reliable for us at the cent at central defence, all season up until this point, had a bit of a nightmare. He scored an own goal on the 41st minute, and then on the 72nd minute played an awful back pass that was just far too short for Alex got to get to, and their player nipped in and scored a winner, and we just never really got back into the game. It was a shame as well, because it was a game we probably should have won. We controlled possession, we created a lot of chances, but just Stone didn't have a good game hopefully he'd been so good up until that point hopefully it's just going to be a blip for him and he'll be back to being as good as he was from then on we did have a bit of a problem in that match though because our only right winger uh, Nicky Walker picked up an injury um, and it was a pretty a pretty serious one he's torn his hamstring and he's out for three to four months now the only other natural right wing we've got at the club is Kane Felix who's been doing so well on the left wing and I'm very reluctant to move him over into the wide midfielder role if you remember in episode one I talked through my tactic how on the left hand side I want my winger to be very wide out and out winger very attacking but on the right hand side of midfield the right midfielder tucks inside to sort of tuck in behind Kyle Dixon when he goes forward as the advanced playmaker and we get our width on the right from the fullback pushing on and uh, Kane Felix really isn't the kind of player who can tuck inside and become an extra central midfield player so he's not suited for that at all so um, we did play him there in the next game but it didn't really work out at all um, Deli Adibola saved us a little bit really um, with goals in the 5th and the 86th minutes um, but the second one was actually after we switched Felix back out onto the left wing. We pushed Grant Roberts forward onto the right-hand side of midfield. He's the midfielder who can play at right back, and I thought, well, combine the two of them. Let's try retraining him to be a wide midfielder on the right, which is what we're doing now. Um, and he played the last 20 minutes of that match on the right-hand side of midfield. Did a decent enough job there, but it allowed, Kay it allowed Felix to be freed up onto the left wing again, and he actually put in the cross for Adebola's second goal. Um, and it was no less than we deserved. We played re really well in that match. Next game, we were away to Corby. Um, we absolutely dominated possession, created loads of chances. We got a Dale Southwell goal fairly early on, um, and that was it. Nothing really happened from that point on. Uh, Roberts was playing on the right-hand side of midfield again, um, but it was fairly uneventful. Um, nice to pick up the win, courtesy of yet another Dale Southwell goal. And our next game was a top-of-the-table clash of AFC Fylde. Um, at this point, both teams were level on everything. Um, we'd played the same amount of games, won the same amount, drawn the same amount, lost the same amount, had the same goal difference, same points. Um, AFC Fylde were top because they on alphabetical, alphabetical order. And by the way, I call shenanigans on that. If that's the way it ends at the end of the season, I'm not having filed finishing above Boston just because they decided to put AFC at the start of their name. But they got away with it in this match. It was nil-nil. We dominated possession, created loads of chances, but we just couldn't score any goals. Partly because we lost the main man, Dale Southwell, went off injured after 18 minutes. Um, and without him, we just don't look anywhere near as threatening going forward. Um, to make matters worse, we also lost our captain and probably second best player behind Southwell, Scott Garner. He went off uh, with an injury after 75 minutes as well. And most of that match was spent with me panicking and wondering what was going to happen when I got my inbox messages in about those two injuries. And they weren't good. 
Dale Southwell out for three or four months. He broke his ankle in that match. That means he's not going to play again for us this year. Hopefully he can be fit again come January, February time. But without him and the 30 or so goals I was expecting to get out of him, the chances of us maintaining a promotion push suddenly suddenly got a lot longer. Um, he was he was the goals. Everything was up, revolved around getting the ball to him, getting him to finish. He'd been playing exceptionally well. Um, and we showed in the filed game how we are a little bit useless in front of goal without him in the side. Useless is probably a little bit harsh, but we're not the same team and we are really going to miss him. Hopefully we can kind of stick around there or thereabouts threatening the playoffs until we can get him fit again and then hope that he comes back in the same kind of form he's been in so far this season to fire us back on back into the promotion hunt um and scott garner is out for a little while as well he's pulled his hamstring and is out for five to six weeks and losing both of those players players at the same time is a big blow and um, we have got cover for garner um, ben marlow can come in and play in the ball winning midfielder position um, grant roberts could come across as well although we're using him out wide on the right at the moment um, but it does mean we don't have a lot of option um, for rotating the defence at all. We're kind of stuck with our usual uh, back four, which does involve our young left back, whose name I can never remember. Um, he's playing far too many games. Dylan Casey, there he is, playing far more games than I'd like him to play, um, which isn't ideal. Next match after that, missing our two key men, uh, we went away to Corby in the FA Cup. This is a team we'd beaten a couple of games earlier, but we never looked like beating them in this game. Um, we, we had a lot of possession, created a lot of chances, but just were so poor in front of goal, we just didn't look like ever winning this game. And it was actually a bit of a disservice to Corby when we equalised in the 71st minute through Owen Heather. And um, quite deservedly, Corby went on to score another couple of goals, and that was our FA Cup over for this season. And that brought us to the end of the month. The board are very happy with how we're doing. We're second in the league at this point. Um, level on points we filed. They are a bit miffed about how poor the financial situation is. We're still about £1,000 a week over our wage budget. And I don't really see what I can do about that. We're down to 16 or 17 fit first team players. What do they want me to do? <laughs> um, my option, if they really forced my hand, I'd have to basically get rid of anybody on any kind of decent contract. So that would be our best players and replace them with untried youngsters so I'm not really keen to do that until it gets to the point where the board are forcing my hand we are going to stay over our wage budget and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep the results going so it doesn't become an issue that they might want to reconsider my position over um, we had a little bit of uh, transfer wheelie dealering um, I needed to get some players out, get some players in. I've had a little bit of movement. So Jay Dowie was a backup ball winning midfielder. He never really got a look and he did play in the Corby match in the FA Cup, but it just wasn't ever going to be good enough for us. He was on £150 a week. Kingsling came in, um, offered to take him on a free. Um, they're actually paying him £300 a week, which seems mad because they're not even as high as our level. So it's far too much money for him, but I wasn't going to turn it down. So Jay Dowie um, has departed the club and with the money that he's freed up, and yes, I know we haven't really freed it up, we were still massively over the wage budget, but in my mind, Kelly Uger is £130 a week, that's £20 less than Jay Dowie was, so we're slowly moving in the right direction, but we've been able to bring in a proper left back. Uh, Kelly Uger has played most of his career in the league, last season he was playing in League One football for Crawley, he didn't play a lot of games, but he's been around the league for a long time, so to get him in the Conference North is a bit of a, a, bit of a coup for us. Um, he's 30 years old now, but a proper left back allows us to rest Dylan Casey and rotate rotate things around a little bit at the back. And also he has the ability to play anywhere across the back four and midfield, anywhere up the left-hand side. He's quite a versatile player. He could even drop into that ball-winning midfielder role if we really needed him to. So very happy to bring him in. Unfortunately, fitness-wise, he obviously hasn't had any kind of pre-season or any game time this season, so he's a long way off being match fit. But once we can get him fit, he's certainly... Swapping him for Jay Dowie is a big improvement to the squad as a whole, so very happy to bring him in. Um... Our next match, this was a second against third clash in the table. 
Um, and we completely robbed Nuneaton in this match. They had six clear-cut chances and missed them all. It wasn't even a blinding goalkeeper performance from Alex Scott. They actually missed all six of their clear-cut chances. Um, we toddled off at the other end. Morgan Ferrier, one of the young strikers we brought in in the summer, playing his first game for us coming off the bench. Um, just robbed him, scored a goal. Um, in the 71st minute um, we hadn't looked at all like scoring up until that point and a couple of minutes earlier I had actually taken Deli Adibola and Joey Johnson off both of our strikers replaced them with Owen Heather and Morgan Ferrier we looked a little bit more lively after that obviously picked up the goal but we absolutely mugged Nani in this match and they would be completely justified in being unhappy at the result they certainly deserve to win but what it does mean is we've opened up a bit of a gap between us and them we're six points ahead of Nuneet and we're still in third place I believe and filed lost um, so we are now top of the league in our own right which is all good stuff but the injuries keep on coming Liam Mars now if you remember Liam Mars got injured before the season even started he's able to play left back or right back and He's a very handy extra bit of backup to have in this squad. He was just coming back to fitness. He'd made it onto the bench for a couple of games. Hadn't made it onto the pitch yet. But he's now... What's he done? He's torn his groin muscle. Missed kicking a ball in an under-21s match. So he's now out for three months. That's him done for the rest of the year. To be honest, that's his second long-term injury already. And we're only in October. I am actively looking at letting this guy go now we can't have a player in a squad when we're operating such a small squad with such a small amount of money um he's just taking too much of our budget up and i will be looking to get rid of him when he's fit again in january or even just release him on a free transfer now if the board will let me because there's just no point in keeping him around which is a shame because if we could get him fit he could be a, a decent member of the squad and then disaster struck again morgan ferrier came into the side scored on his debut and now he's injured for two months. Uh, he's strained his knee ligaments. So that's another striker gone. Um, not ideal at all. That's him done until probably around about the time Dale Southwell comes back. Maybe a, maybe a, a few weeks or a month earlier. But isn't really going to give Ferrier any kind of opportunity to stake a claim in the first team for himself. So Joey Johnson really has a lot of pressure on him now to be the one who comes in and performs for us. And then the last bit of transfer business we got involved in, we've brought in a young player on loan, Jack Hartley. Um, exactly the kind of player we needed, really. He can play wide on the right or the left. He's equally comfortable playing as a winger or a wide midfielder. Um, so he can slot straight into that right midfield position um, that we have been playing Grant Roberts in. Um, but by popping Hartley in there, um, or he's even back up for Felix if needed, um, it just means we've got Roberts, who is very much a utility player, can play right midfield, right back, central midfield. Um, it just allows us to free him up a little bit to uh, to drop in and out of the team where we need him and allows for a bit more rotation in both defence and attack, which is no bad thing at all. And obviously with Hartley being a lone player, we don't have to pay any of his wages either. And he's here until the end of the season. And I think that could work out to be a cracking signing. Um, and yeah, there he is. He's good. And that's the league as we are going into the going into today's match with three points clear at the top. Fylder in second place, um, and then it's Telford, Nuneaton, and Tamworth filling up the playoff spots. Uh, Dale Southwell is still the the division's top goal scorer. He hasn't played for is it three games now, um, but he's still top scorer on eleven goals. Kyle Dixon is still the top player in the division. His average rating has dropped a little bit, but seven point six seven is still fantastic. And Kyle Dixon is now also the joint top. Um, on the assists table with Kane Felix in third place with just one assist fewer than him. So everything is still going well, providing we can find a way to score the goals, which leads us into today's match. So we're at home to Alfreton. Uh, where are Alfreton in the lead? They're, league. They're down in 10th place. Um, I've already got my team picked for this match, so if we just talk through what we're going to be doing. So um, we're going for a fairly settled um, back line. We've got Alex Gott in goal and then a back four of Mills, Casey, Stone and Piaggiani. Uh, Kelly Yuga can't, would be in line to make his debut today. He wasn't quite fit enough um, in the last game. But he's actually away on international duty. Um, 
which is mad. I didn't realise he was still a current international, but I guess he'll be ready to come back in next time, providing he doesn't go and get himself injured. Um, Scott Garner is actually just about fit again. I could probably put him back in the side, but I just don't see the reason to risk him. Uh, ben Marlowe's played the last couple of games and has been doing fine, and Garner's there on the bench to come on if we need him. Um, and then we've got Felix Wide on the left, Carl Dixon, where he's been playing all season as the advanced playmaker, and new boy Jack Hartley, making his debut on the right-hand side of midfield. And then up front, we're going for Deli Adebola as the target man, who's having a cracking season, and Joey Johnson as the poacher, basically because he's the only option we've got left. Um, Owen Hever is more of a target man. We have still got Jack Friend, who's on loan from Peterborough, but in fact, it looks like he's injured as well, so he's out for a couple of weeks. So Johnson really is our only option as a poacher. So if he goes down with a knock as well, we're going to have to probably rethink the system and maybe play Adebola up front on his own and bring an extra man into that midfield. But we'll worry about that if it happens. I guess we could even play Felix and Hartley as more advanced wingers either side of Adebola now um, and bring Garner back into that midfield if we need to. But hopefully it won't come to that. And hopefully Joey Johnson will get a goal today um, and start to cement his place in the team until Southwell is fit again. So, the media are making us favourites. We are top of the league. We are the home side. And um, defeat could see us drop down to second place, but hopefully that's not going to happen. Alfreton are coming with a very defensive lineup. Um, my assistant manager still isn't confident enough to give me opposition advice, but he is happy to give me some tips on the team talk, which is fine because I'm rubbish at team talks. Now let's submit our team and get going in this match. Oh. Straight away we lose the ball, that's not ideal. Oh, very quiet to start things off. I did realise, actually, that in the first couple of episodes of this series, I've been playing on extended highlights, which is why the episodes have been running so long. Um, I've switched to key highlights for this match. I would appreciate some feedback in the comments. Uh, let me know whether you prefer the key highlights and the slightly shorter episodes that leads to, or if you prefer to see the extended highlights on the matches, bearing in mind that does lead to the episodes running to sort of 20, 25 minutes long, rather than the 15 to 20 minutes I'll be aiming for with the key highlights but let me know in the comments which you prefer I'm happy to do it either way uh, my instinct is to go for key highlights unless enough people tell me extended is a preference but I'm happy to leave that in the hands of you guys in the comments we're half an hour in and nothing much is happening we've had over 60% of the possession and we've created a few chances but nothing worthy of a highlight yet only the one shot on target Alfredton haven't had a shot on target yet and are struggling to even get hold of the ball but it looks like we're going to go into half-time with nothing worthy of a highlight, which is a bit of a worry. Suggests that this sort of makeshift side isn't really going to create the amount of goal-scoring opportunities that we really need if we're going to maintain our spot at the top of the league. But, yeah, let's encourage the team. We can still win this match. We just need a chance, really. Dixon picking up the ball, finds Adebola. Can he slot that through? And the highlight ends, so obviously he didn't. And now the clock's just ticking on again. We are absolutely dominating possession, but it's not leading to very much in the way of chances. Um, it might mean a rethink to the system is on the cards at some point. If this pattern continues for many more games, it's been this way for a couple of games now. It started with the AFC filed match, um, and we are just sort of dominating possession, but without Southwell... We don't have that cutting edge up front. And you can see we've had eight chances, but only one's even been on target. So we are struggling a little bit in front of goal without a key man. Um, Adibola's struggling for fitness, so we'll bring Owen, Owen Hever on for him. Johnson's not having a good game, but we just don't have anyone to come on and replace him. And I don't really want to shift the formation around too much, unless I'm forced to. Um, Hartley isn't having the best of games. So we'll bring Roberts on. He's been quite comfortable playing the last few games. We have got Jack Williams on the bench, who's another left winger, um, who's looked okay in the, the odd appearance here and there that he's played. Um, so it might be a case of throwing him on for the last 10 minutes if Johnson really doesn't do anything. And we could maybe go to a 4-3-3 a three, three style formation. But, oh, we don't need to now, though, because Lionel Skull Stone has got a goal. That's put us 1-0. And that's good, because I didn't want to have to fiddle around too much with the system. 
Um, I was thinking we could perhaps have Heather up front with Felix and Williams either side of him. Um, and then go to a midfield with Roberts just tucking in properly. But glad we're not having to do that because it's completely untried. And hopefully we can just see this game out now and pick up another boring 1-0. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to bring Scott Garner on actually. Um, just to start getting some game time back in him. As he comes back to fitness, actually I'm not. I don't really have anyone I want to bring him on for. I'm going to take Felix off and give Williams some time. Felix hasn't had a great game. Let's give Jack Williams some time on the left wing. There's no reason to risk Garner. He's not back in full training yet, so it probably would be a little bit silly to throw him into a match where we don't really need him. Hopefully we're just going to see this out. We're still, we have absolutely dominated possession. We should have created more chances, really. But Dixon's picked the ball up here and found Heather, who does get it to Williams. And Johnson should have done better with that. That's our first clear-cut chance of the game in the 86th minute. And Joey Johnson really does need to do better with those kind of things. As a poacher, he's in the side to put those little chances away when they are presented to him. And that's what Southwell was doing so well. Um, and Johnson's going to need to pick up that skill if he's going to be the kind of player we need him to be. But a 1-0 win is a 1-0 win. Keeps the run going. Very happy with that. That's going to keep us top of the league. And um, that'll be that. If you've enjoyed the episode, make sure you pop a like on there. I do. I would love all these early episodes of the series to get to 50 likes. It makes a massive difference for the visibility of the channel, the visibility of the series. And lets me know that you're enjoying something a little bit different. I'm doing the videos in a slightly different style. Um, we have a completely different team to anything that I've done before on the channel. So it just lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, and obviously... Get your feedback in the comments. Let me know what you think and subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's episode. Thanks very much for watching.